we're talking about knitting local on today's Yarn Spotlight. And yarn expert Clara Parks is here to tell us all about it. Hi, Clara. Hi, Uni. So why should we knit local? Well, knitting local is kind of like eating local. It's, it's the whole concept of bringing what we wear closer to home. Mm -hmm. And in this country, we used to have a very, very rich textile history. And it's starting to come back. There are some spectacular yarns from small sources all the way across the country and those sources are getting bigger and bigger and you're starting to see more unique farm yarns showing up in our yarn stores. Well, I, and I, what I love about them is that they're kind of unusual and really interesting. They are, exactly. Like here we have what could be more local than the fiber of the bison that used to roam our plains years and years ago. This is a uh, Bison, using bison for yarn is a relatively new discovery. Mm -hmm. Those fibers used to be considered sort of like dandelion fuzz that you had to brush <laughs> away while you were harvesting the, uh, the skin. But more recently, fiber people figured out that that was a beautiful, beautiful, short, crimpy, down fiber, a guard hair. Well, and let's just make sure that everybody understands because, you know, if you've ever seen like a buffalo like an old buffalo coat or I mean it's like yeah. a shaggy hairy yeah. kind of thing and yeah. so it doesn't really seem like it would translate to this kind of beautiful yarn. Exactly. That Those would be the guard hairs. Mm -hmm. It's uh, these animals just like uh, uh, camels and other animals who have to live out in the cold in very rustic conditions, they grow a very delicate undercoat okay. that we don't normally see mm -hmm. and in, in the spring when they get warm, just like with your cat probably, um, they start to shed. And that's when you can collect the fibers. Um, this one is actually harvested straight off of the animal, off of the, the skin itself. And if you separate those from that big, heavy, mm -hmm. other outer hairs, you get this light, 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 short, crimpy, warm, wonderful fiber that is beautiful for clothing. What's wonderful about these types of fibers is when you wash them, mm -hmm. they bloom incredibly. They fill out all of those open spaces on your lace. But um, if you want to use them for more sturdy things, mm -hmm. this is an example. This is lace weight, 100% bison. And then this is the same bison fibers with 10% nylon added. Oh, interesting. And then the nylon takes care of giving you that strength and more mm -hmm. substance, that bounce wonderful body in there. You can use this for more everyday clothing. You could even use it for a thick pair of socks. You could use mm -hmm. it for mittens, hats, uh, anything like that. It's also a two-ply yarn like this one is. Two little strands mm -hmm. are spun together. It's However, incredibly consistent. Very, very consistent, smooth. yes. I mean, but it has that halo still. It does. Well, and I, the colors are just are really fun. So this is natural bison, is that right? Exactly. The fiber comes off of the animal in this shade. Mm -hmm. And when you dye it, it's, it's a complicated process that tends to harden the fiber. Mm -hmm. And so the better thing is to keep it in its natural color and then over dye it. And that's what gives you these gorgeous, rich, kind of moody, jewel-toned colors. But bison isn't the only exotic that's out there or that's out there in this continent? No, not at all. We have a lot of people raising very interesting, lovely animals. We have a thriving cashmere community in North America. Hmm. And also um, an area that we're starting to see a lot of growth is in the alpaca industry. And, and the problem has been historically in the past that you have a lot of little farms mm -hmm. and they don't produce enough of a consistent quality and grade and color and texture of fiber to be suitable to be pulled together for a large quantity of yarn, mm -hmm. like the kind of quantity that you could see in your local yarn store. Mm, it's a scale issue. Exactly. And because yarn stores need to be able to offer you a full sweater's worth mm -hmm. in whatever color it is that you want. That has started to change. And over here we have an example of a North American produced alpaca and it's blended with some merino. That's a great yarn composition for any kind of everyday wear. It's a very well-rounded three-ply yarn. So it's gonna give you a beautiful stockinette, it's gonna give you gorgeous cables, high relief. It could also work for color work. Well, know? I think it's amazing that we can, that we can knit yarns made here with animals that may or may not be from here. Exactly. But certainly the, the support to the community is going here. Exactly. And, and the challenge with these, it's just like when you buy produce at your local farmer's mm -hmm. market. They may cost a little bit more, but there's so much story behind it. And if you like driving through the countryside and seeing sheep grazing, if you like seeing farms, how you can help maintain that is by buying local yarns. And as a knitter, to be plugged into yarn at the source. Exactly.